You need a shot timer because that which gets measured gets worked on. The Range Tech Timer is the official timer of active self-protection because it is versatile, reliable, feature-rich, and very economical. Check out all it can do at the link below. I have been a martial instructor my whole life. Guns, knives, sticks, fighting each other, jiu-jitsu, striking, it doesn't matter, I've been doing that. So my specialty is you, not weapons. I don't teach pistols, I teach people. All right, so I never refer to myself as a firearms instructor. Um, you will live, if you live to the ripe age of 80, you will live 750,000 hours. You will sleep one third of those, which is 250,000 hours. If you work a regular job and retire at 65, you will work 80,000 hours. Uh, at this point in my life, and I'm not near retirement, I've worked over 100,000 hours in my chosen field in the private sector, which means if I suck, I don't get paid. It's different than government work, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's no reward for that. So you have to get good at it quick. And you have to read people and you have to get really specialized. I hope I get another 100,000 hours. It means that I spent 20% of my life training. Every day I still get up and practice. You know why? Because this is the most important class I'm ever going to teach. It's my only chance to reach some of you ever. I may never see you again. So if you don't get my best product, then I have failed you utterly. Coaches talk about your success and their failures. Listen to coaches. All right. They never talk about your failures and their successes. Those are narcissists. Be careful, be wary, avoid. All right. Because they will sabotage and destroy you when you get better. Now, there's a state that is allowing us to shoot at a very high level, and I'm going to start doing a course on this. It's flow state, and uh, most extreme athletics and warriors use this state because it exists outside of time and allows us to make very quick computations under stress. The problem is the only way to induce a flow state is we have to create struggle. If you're not struggling, there's no risk. No risk, you can't enter the state. So the idea that I can coddle you into success does not exist. But there is a difference between personalities. Alpha male, hard chargers, can't sit still, always gotta be doing something, all of you, <laughs> all right? You need about a 20% increase in uh, processing. You need a push of about 20% over your skill level, which is ginormous, it's a huge one. Some people that are not like that, a little more laid back, they only need 4%. That's enough to, if I get above 4%, then what happens? They, they drop right out of the state and they critique themselves and then they can't do it. So I need 20% from you guys today. I need to push you a bit. I only got two hours. Simply not gonna happen in that way. And we're gonna talk about red dots. All right, red dots are incredibly important. I used to say in my class, welcome to the future, and now it's just the present. Um, my open classes are probably 50% red dots when I'm not teaching a red dot class. And of course my red dot class is 100%. And uh, that's a wave of the future. Every gun's coming out optic ready. If you choose not to embrace the red dot, then you will be left behind because the scores have gone up about 14% in my class already. All right. Uh, if you guys don't know Justin, he has a drill called the five yard roundup, which I used to shoot at 98, 99s. With a red dot, I shoot it at 100 almost all the time now. It's an easier aiming device for me. But that doesn't mean you pick it up and you get better. It means that it's an easier tool to access and understand if you understand how to do that. And what I got to do in two hours is kind of teach you guys how to do that. Let's talk about safety real quick, okay? Um, how you approach something dangerous is with respect. Loaded guns are loaded guns, knives are sharp, swords will cut your thumbs and your heads off. Be careful. That's what the first rule means. The second rule means what? Where is your attention? Don't put the muzzle on anything you're not willing to destroy. What is the most common thing that people muzzle that they shouldn't? Themselves. Themselves. Every class, somebody has crossed their hand because they get out of order, they don't organize themselves, and their hand has to hover around the holster, and then they got to put it back into the belt. If your holster has to be held, throw it away because it doesn't work or change it. The holster is your safe. It needs to hold the gun whether you're upside down, being thrown, or in a car wreck, okay? If you don't believe me, go back and look at the FBI shootout where they put it on it and it disappeared. Would it change the world if they had good holsters that worked for them? Next one is the interaction rule. I don't put my finger on the trigger until the sights are on the target and I decide to shoot. I should never point a gun at somebody I'm not gonna shoot. I don't know about where you guys are from, but in the state of Georgia, it's called aggravated assault. It is a three to five year penalty in jail, which is a long, long time for pointing a gun. If I draw a gun, don't point it at somebody, it's nothing. We don't have a brandishing problem. So I need to understand that those are my rules of engagement. And if I'm not gonna shoot something, is there any reason my finger would be on the trigger? But there is. 
There's a thing called trigger verification and trigger checking, and it happens to everyone under pressure. It's, is my thing still there? Most of you do it as soon as you get out of your car. What do you do? You check your things, and it's an unconscious habit, so therefore, if you don't bring the presence of mindfulness to it, you'll never know you do it. Every instructor has to tell people what? Take your finger off the trigger. It's a constant reminder, except that you're probably one that does it, because I do, everybody does, and therefore I'm open to what? Change. If you believe you don't do it, then you're probably doing it, and you just can't see it anymore. The next rule is this, and I call it the impossible rule. Beware of your target and your surroundings. What's impossible about that? You're not multitaskers. You can do one thing at a time and you can change your processing from one thing to a time. But if you do two things at a time, what happens? Yeah. This is a scientific term, it's called you suck. You're not very good at it, all right? What if you do three things at a time? You get even worse. Now, I don't know about you guys, but they don't allow texting in my state or talking on the phone because it degrades your driving ability. Correct, in Georgia, we can't do that. And our benevolent political overlords decided to communicate that in the most odd fashion by putting billboards on the side of the road that you have to read. That's ironic right there. Alanis Morissette doesn't know anything about irony, but that's ironic. If I'm reading a board, is it any different than if I'm reading my phone? No, I can't do both. Now, some of you don't believe that, so put your finger up for me. Point it at me, right in front, like this, a sight. Now look real hard at your finger, what happens to me? Two of, uh, two of me, so which one's right? All right. Now look at me, but don't put your finger down. Look at me hard, fingers up. What happens to your finger? It's gone or it's two. That's how you can shoot over your child's head. It's called stereoscopic vision. Human beings are predators because their eyes are in the front of their skull. Prey has eyes on the side of the skull. Just realize you were meant to eat meat. No, it's not a vegetarian thing. All right. But you're meant to track prey. So your eyes are in front of you, and if I have stereoscopic vision, it means I can look past an obstacle and see something behind it, which is an incredible advantage. Now what's that got to do with shooting? You can look at the target and see the red dot at the same time. That's how stereoscopic vision, but we didn't have it. We had to look at the what? Front sight, which means we have three focal planes to line up, so two of them are very fuzzy. So we can't be aware of our target and its surroundings because we can only do one thing at a time. So how do we address that? If something draws your attention away, I want you to take your finger off the trigger and see what it is. You can't just go, bang, 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 tension change, bang, bang, bang. All right, that's not how it works. Finger removes from the trigger, we see what's going on, and we go to the next thing. You let your awareness shift. Final rule is, if you drop a gun, let it fall. All right. Competition, you got to be really careful, single action CZs. One was dropped and killed the RSO. Yeah, just dropped on the ground, shot him right through. So guns are dangerous, but if they fall, there's nothing you can do to fix it by catching it. So be very careful of that. Why do I bring it up? Because I'm an entangled gunfighter. You know what happens a lot? People drop their guns. How many of you dropped your guns in your scenarios? Look at that. All right, that's why I carry an RMR, because I'm going to drop it. I am a caveman hard on my things. Now, if you gave your kids five rules, what would happen? Nothing. They couldn't follow five rules if you asked them to, right? Or if you gave them five tasks. Hey, go clean your room, take the garbage out, wash the dishes, then I want you to paint the wall, and then do your homework. How many things get done? Zero. Yeah, you don't even remember what I said. I don't remember what I said, all right? So, two most important rules are what? Muzzle discipline, trigger finger discipline, all right? Keep your finger off the trigger, point it in a safe direction. But the most important rule is what? Point it in a safe direction. You'll have a loud bang and nothing will happen. Don't muzzle things that you don't want to shoot. If you can have an accident like that, an unintentional discharge, that's what's going to happen. If you break both of those rules, you're going to have a bad day. So be incredibly careful. I have the highest exposure, although you may too, all right, several of you, because I handle guns in excess of 40 hours a week. So who's most likely to have an unintentional discharge? Me. And if I don't believe it's going to happen, then it's the danger of law enforcement. You're most dangerous at the beginning and the end of your career because you're not paying attention anymore. So you got to be super careful with that. Remember, rules are tactics. I just gave you ways to shoot things. I didn't give you rules. I told you how to make decisions. If you're not going to shoot it, keep your finger off the trigger. Don't point it at it. It's a tactic for you to get better. All right, everybody going to be safe? Yes. yes. Anybody have medical experience? Uh, Anybody stop the bleed? Stop stuff the like that. All right, there's a blowout kit over there. There's another one over there. All right, we've got it. Uh, plug the holes. They have a good medical uh, plan here and do it. But there's no reason we should shoot ourselves. But there is because we don't pay attention. You've got to be mindful. What the hell does that mean? 
People say that all the time. What does mindfulness mean? It means to be present. Feel what we're at right now. Feel the air, how beautiful the day is. You're standing with people you might even like a little bit, right? And you're gonna do something that's pretty cool. Where do you wanna be? I wanna be here right now. But most of you are worried about what you did in your scenario or how you're gonna get on your airplane or what's at your hotel or where dinner is gonna be. And your mind floats away from the present and then it makes you very dangerous. And it only takes a second. Concentration lasts approximately 15 seconds and it has to be reset. It's cyclic by nature. You know why fighters do this? Bam, 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 bam! Everybody goes, oh yeah, they're loosening up, they're getting the tension out of the body. Utter nonsense. They're resetting their minds because they're not there right there and they're like, I'm gonna shake it out and get back to it. Something you should be doing in shooting too is learning how to set back.